In this clip, we'll learn how to work with sets in Maya and how they transfer over into Mari. Okay, great. So I'm working with module one, clip three, begin here. If you want to follow along, it's in your exercise files. So we have talked about in the last video, the UV layout for this particular asset. If we jump in and look at that, we talked about using a multi-tile layout, which as you can see here in my UV editor, it provides us a lot of flexibility. So not only do we have flexibility in terms of texture distribution, being that we can assign higher resolution textures to bigger pieces of geometry and lower resolution textures to smaller pieces, we can also utilize this distribution of UVs in terms of this layout of patches as a means of selecting and hiding or targeting geometry for painting over inside of Mari. Let me just show you real quick. I'll just bounce into a Mari project here. And you can see here with this same asset loaded, we'll come in here and just simply click around on it. And you can see how I'm making selections by default based on the patch that I click on. If I jump over here and show you the UVs for that, you can see here that again, we can make selections based on those patches. Now with this selection made, we can limit the area that we can paint on to the selected patch, or we can use that selection to hide or reveal geometry as well. Now not only do we have the ability to select by patch, we also have the ability to select by face. Now let me just come in here and reset this project a bit. Now by default, we would basically draw out a selection here, and you can see how I'm selecting these faces. But because Mari has a little bit more intelligence behind its selections, we can actually use this smart selection mode combined with this connectedness UV smart type to make selections based on UV shells. So you can see here how I can come in and I can select UV shells. Now we're going to talk about selections more in the following module and later in this course. But let's go ahead and talk about what happens if we want to store selections that aren't necessarily defined by what a patch is, what a shell is, or what this entire object is. Well, inside of Maya, there's a feature called a set. Now this feature is something that's been around inside of Maya for quite some time. And as you work inside of Maya, Maya will actually automatically create some of these for you. Now, sets are stored right over here inside my outliner. You can see them right down here. And I'm actually going to delete this one. We'll remake it here in just a moment. But you can see here there are four sets that have actually been created as a result of me assigning different materials to pieces of this little creature. So if I were to come over and maybe grab this first Lambert selection set, I can come over and right click and just say select set members. And you can see that is the shading group for that red Lambert shader. And we could repeat that process for these other ones as well. Now, these sets were created for us as I assigned those materials, but we have the ability to create custom sets here inside of Maya, which can actually be populated over inside of our Mari project. We can use that to store custom selections that, again, don't meet the requirements of, say, an entire shell in our UVs or an entire patch. Let me show you what I mean. So if I come in here and select maybe the body of this little guy, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select a row of faces here. Let's go ahead and go into face mode and I'll just select maybe these two rows right here. There we go. So you can see they go all the way up kind of the front of his uh, little face there or his body. And let's say I wanted to store these so I could uh, translate this into a selection over inside of Mari. We could simply come up to the create menu and down to sets. And you can see there's a few options here. Now there are two different types of sets. There's a normal set and there's a quick selection set. Really, they're very similar. They're ways to store objects or components so they can be selected at a later point. Now, really, when it comes to using these in Mari, you want to stick with these quick selection sets. Really, the only difference is regular sets can be stored in something called a partition, and that really doesn't relate to this back and forth between Maya and Mari. So let's just create a quick selection set, and I'll just call this demo set. 
There we go. We'll click OK, and you can see that appears right down here. So now, when I come in here, I can easily come in and reselect those faces that I stored, just like so. You can see I have a couple of other ones here. I have a crab cone selection set. We'll just go ahead and grab that. And then I have a crab soft, and this is kind of an area where I feel like if this is a shell and kind of he has a shell on his belly, then maybe this is kind of the area that's kind of a soft tissue. So we can store these as quick selection sets here inside of Maya. Now, in order to get those over to Mari, there are a number of different options that we have. Now, there are really three primary file types that you'll be sending over to Mari. Uh, you can use an OBJ, you can use an FBX, or you can use an Alembic cache. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this little creature looks like in OBJ form over inside of Mari. That's actually what we were just looking at here. Let me just go ahead and sort of deselect the geometry. So what I've got here is our OBJ loaded into Mari, and I'm inside this selection groups palette. Now you'll notice here that there are quite a few different selection groups that have been created for us, and Mari's going to automatically create one for each and every mesh object that was contained in that OBJ. So you can see here, there is the crab creature, crab leg nine. This is going to be the group inside of Maya, and this is going to be the mesh name. So this is pretty consistent moving down. There is the crab claw number nine, goes with crab leg number nine, and it looks pretty much the same until we get to here. Now these, this name is a bit longer, and you can see that something else has been appended to the beginning. Well, it says crab underscore cone. That's the name of my quick selection set. So let me go ahead and select that here, and you can see Mari has automatically made a face selection that is not restrained by a shell or a patch. So this is a custom selection that was passed from Maya to Mari. And again, this can be very, very useful when you're thinking about the way you want to paint this particular asset once you get over into, into Mari. So let's go back to Maya really quickly. We've looked at the OBJ form here. We'll get back into Mari here in just a moment. But when exporting out manually these different meshes as these OBJs, FBXs, or Alembic files, there's some things you need to keep in mind. The OBJ file we saw there exported out all of our selection sets here with the exception of our material-based selection sets. So these right here, these were not stored inside of that OBJ. That's perfectly normal. If you're wanting to create sets based on material assignments inside of your Maya file, and you want to pass that information over to Mari, you will need to use an FBX file. Now, there's a few things you want to keep in mind when exporting as FBX. Let me just select our group here, and I'll come over to File, Export Selection, and there's the directory that I've been saving in. I'm going to go ahead and switch my file type to FBX here. Now, inside the options here, there's some things you want to change. Now, I've made some changes to the geometry portion of these options uh, based on some things that I wanted to be stored in this FBX file. Things like smoothing groups, tangents and binormals, so on and so forth. Now, you'll notice here that this current preset now says user defined. By default, this should say Autodesk Media and Entertainment. So let's go ahead and scroll down. There's one important change, and that's down here under FBX file format. Now the default for this is going to be FBX 2016 and 2017, here inside of Maya 2017. You'll want to change this down to FBX 2014 and 2015 for export over to Mari. Mari just handles that FBX file better. So let's go ahead and cancel out of this. We've looked at FBX export options. Let's talk about these sets in terms of an Alembic cache. We'll come up here to the cache menu and Alembic cache, and let's choose export selection to Alembic cache. And I'll just go into the options box there. Now this is a pretty long options box, so I'm going to minimize some of these rollouts so that we can get down to the advanced options. And there's a couple things you definitely want to check here. 
in, if you're sending this over to Mari, you want to write the UV information into the Alembic file. So you'll want to check this guy. And we also want to write over the face sets. So those come up over inside of Mari. So those are the things you want to keep in mind to get your quick selection sets inside your Mari projects. Okay, great. So with that said, let's go ahead at this point and move on to our next clip and we will learn how to set up Mari's MGO plugin here inside of Maya.